In this week's Photoshop tutorial, I'll be showing you how to replicate shadows in Photoshop. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Manny and you can find me on Facebook at Rita Pro. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to replicate shadows from an existing image and place those onto your new image on a complete new background. Now, if you're an advanced user, you might know already about this technique and this tutorial is not for you. But if you're a beginner or intermediate and not sure completely how to copy shadows from an existing image onto a new one, this is the tutorial for you. So yeah, enough of the talking, let's get right away into the tutorial. Okay, so over in Photoshop, as you guys can see here on the right hand side, I already have again a few layers open and as well the previous layer and again the original layer. So let me actually turn everything off and show you guys this is the background. And on top of that, I've added again the original photo from the subject who's kicking a soccer ball and then also the shadow which we want to replicate now. Then I did the first step was basically just cutting out the subject over here. So let's do that. And now what I did is copied basically the shadow from this image into this image here. Because if you want to copy it straight away with just the mask and brush this in as I did with the subject, it will not work because obviously the texture here from the grass and the color is different than the one underneath, right? So our background. So we need to replicate this again. Now, as I said earlier, if you're an advanced Photoshopper, you most probably know already about this technique. But if you're new to this, maybe this is something that you can use in your next retouching. Okay, so what we're going to do, first of all, is just obviously copy everything in. So we've cut out just our subject here. This you can also learn again on our channel with advanced masking, where you can also work with refine a little bit. And do have a look at that tutorial if you don't know how to do this. Then for the next step now, I want to obviously copy in the shadow. So I'm going to go first of all onto my layer here, hit right click onto the mask and say disable layer mask. So for me to in order obviously get the shadow here. Great, so we can see the shadow now. I'm going to zoom in a bit closer. Okay, and now I'm going to take the pen tool from the left hand side here, select the pen tool and behind the subject I'm going to start just with an anchor point. So place an anchor point over here and just drag and again I'm going to go a little bit further here just with the anchor point placing a few paths and I'm also doing this quite quickly now because obviously I don't want to keep you waiting too long with this. Okay, like so, maybe just changing that a bit more. Okay, and completing the path to the end. Now, if you're also not familiar with the pen tool, please have a look on the channel as a tutorial teaching you how to work with a pen tool. Inside of that path now, I'm going to hit right click and say make a selection, zero feathering please, hit OK. And for the next step now, what I'm going to do is also maybe transform this a little bit, just because it's not looking that good here in the front. So I'm going to take the marking tool from the left hand side, hit right click inside of that selection, say transform selection, and just with command on the keyboard, I'm just moving this a little bit out my selection. Okay, hit enter and that is accepted. Now I'm going to take a new layer from down here and this will be first of all the shoe background. So again shoe shadow not background actually. Okay, you can rename that to anything you like. Shoe shadow and with the marking tool inside of that selection hit right click and say fill here and with black foreground color. Okay and press command D, get out of the selection. So I'm working with a Mac, if you're a Windows person, please press control when I say command. Okay, so for you it's com control D, for Windows Mac users, command D. Okay, I'm gonna move that all the way underneath. That's first of all the shoe uh, layer, you can't see it right now because obviously the layer on top is hiding that, but here is our shadow. And now what I'll do is just go back in, take the pen tool once again, and start again behind the subject, placing an anchor point and going all the way through here just with the pen tool along the shadow from the original image. And again, go all the way along these lines. And again, remember, if you don't know how to work with the pen tool, have a look on the channel. It's a great tutorial teaching you how to get into the Photoshop pen tool and how to use it. Okay, I'm also going to quickly just go along these lines and do this a bit quicker. I don't want you to wait so long for this but when you do these process please take a bit more time and just do it a bit more carefully okay and we're going to go all the way around I'm also going to use some curves sometimes then a bit of a straight line kind of exactly trying to replicate that shadow 
area. Okay, we're going to go a bit further. And you guys can see I'm rushing quite through this. Take a bit more time when you do this. Okay, and a bit more, a bit more, and we're going to go all the way around. Cheated there a little bit. Okay, and almost there. Okay, so behind the subject again, we're completing the path here. Just click on the last anchor point. Zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the whole path. I'm going to now, with the pen tool, hit right click again and say make a selection. Zero feathering, please. Okay. And also now onto the new layer icon down here again. Select the marking tool, hit right click inside of the selection and say fill. Fill this with black foreground color. Okay and press Command D, get out of the selection. Now, we've created both shadows. If I'm going to go and disable the layer again, you guys can see here is the shadow. So, obviously the shadow is quite too hard. So first of all, what I'll do is just again go and zoom in a bit closer. And then I'm going to go and work with the shoe shadow, or actually the layer 1, which is again here the person shadow. Let's quickly rename that. So you guys can also rename that to whatever you like. Person shadow. And first of all, I'm going to take down the opacity just to like 30 or 40%. Except that. Let's actually turn off the shoe shadow. Zoom out a little bit again. And first of all, I'll just try with my sliders moving left and right. Sometimes the shadows go between 25, 30 to 40%. And for this one, maybe even 35 would do pretty good. I think, yeah, 35, 36. Somewhere around there. So my first opacity here would be 35%. Okay, then the shadow. I'm also going to switch that on. This is obviously a bit closer to the subject and a bit harder and more defined. So this will be not so light. It will be a bit darker. So what I'll do is also turn it down to like 40%. Okay, and now tweak it up again a little bit more. So there's a bit, a bit more shadow to it. Something like 50, 51%. Great. Okay, so that's my first effect. Now what I will do is obviously go back into the shadow and just break these hard edges here. Now, there are also a few techniques. Either you can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and work with Gaussian blur. I don't like it so much because it just spreads too much. Okay, you can do it a little bit, yes, or you can do it even further like it's just soft shadow and you can play with that a little bit. Or you can also create a mask on this and then also brush again with the mask so it feathers out or you can use gradients to also let that whole shadow be very lightly inside. Let me also switch back here just to white and black with the gradient and show you guys what I mean with this. If you place a gradient onto your mask, but you have to need to you need to have the mask selected. You can brush it out like that or even fade it a little bit more. I'm going to go back to the history and just scratch all of that because I do not use a mask on that. What I use is just the blur tool for that. So basically go over here to blur, blur tool, switch it all the way back to 100% opacity for the strength. And now I'm going to zoom in a bit closer. And on my person shadow, starting with that, I'm just going to take the blur tool and smudge the edges a little bit. So not everything is smudged so heavy. Just in here a little bit, going over. Right, and then also over here, and you can see now how the edge slowly breaks. Okay, and I can manually now go along these lines and slowly smudge all of that. Okay, and a little bit more. And I'm also working with the Wacom Continuous 5 Pro tablet in order for me to change my wheel and the brush size really quickly. If you don't have that, you can also press Control Alt together, change the hardness to zero, and make it a bit smaller again and then also continue brushing over this. So this I would do now around the whole complete shadow here. Again, remember, you can also use the Gaussian Blur to do this. I just like to do it manually here with my hand and with the Blur tool itself, just to have a bit more control in some areas, a bit more blurring than others. Okay, and we're going to go along these lines as well. A few more. You guys can see how that shadow slowly breaks into our background. Sometimes if you also have concrete or very defined hard uh, surfaces, then it also works to have the shadow really hard and defined instead of just blurring it off like this. 
Okay, and again a bit more. And obviously I'm rushing through this, doing this a bit quicker. Take a bit more time when you do this. Okay, and this technique also helps sometimes if you have a lot of overlaying shadows. Okay, like so, great. And now for the next step that I'll still do is again on my shoe shadow, I'll just take the opacity down like to 20% and the brush super small, so it's just feathering the edge. And then going along this line. And I want it to be a bit harder because it's obviously a bit closer to the shadow here, to the shoe, to the subject. <laughs> so, yeah, that it just looks a bit better. Okay, slowly breaking that. And now the shoe shadow, I can still move that in a little bit or out. Or again, press Command T. Withholding Command, I can also rotate that shadow a little bit out again if I want to stretch or do something with it. Great, I'm going to hit Enter. Zoom out. And now you guys can see right away the whole effect of this. So let's show it again. This is the person here, basically just the shoe. And then also the person having that on the background. And it looks also amazing because it's obviously on the same surface as we had before. So yeah, that's just a quick technique there. Okay, so basically guys, again, using the pen tool, cut out and create a really cool path. Then again, the selection. Fill it up with black foreground color and set down the opacity a little bit. And then lastly, with the blur tool, smudge the edges and you're good to go. So yeah, if you like this tutorial, guys, hit me up with a thumbs up there. Share this with all your buddies who are not familiar with anything of replicating shadows. And don't forget to subscribe. So yeah, thanks again guys for watching. I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. And you are still watching. That is good because you're in for a treat. Here are some more tutorials from last week and then as well a few popular ones. So yeah, wait no longer. Click right away. Learn what is for free. Just check here. Okay.